So a viewer reached out with an interesting challenge. The first thing they needed was a click to reveal with forced navigation. Now, this isn't really that big of a deal. I've certainly done these sorts of tutorials before, but they had one little caveat to it as well. They wanted learners to have a disabled next button until they completed all the clicks that were required for the click to reveal. But what was unique is that if they returned to this slide, they wanted the next button to be enabled and fully visible, ready for the learners to click next to go on. So force navigation with a twist, basically. So what I have on this slide is I have my six buttons. These are gonna be the click to reveal. I have a back and a next button. The next button is going to be disabled and I've created an additional state for it. Uh, just a quick note here that I've labeled everything. It's really important that you label everything to do with variables and advanced actions so that it's much easier to write those advanced actions. In this case here, I have an additional state. I disabled my rollover and down states just to keep it simple but there's a disabled state where it's the same image except about 10% opacity. So it looks essentially grayed out. And the other thing that we have is we have this smart shape over here. Now this smart shape is a multi-state object. Now I didn't change the object itself. Instead, what I did for all the additional states that correspond to the buttons that you can click, there are additional objects within those states. And this is something that not everyone knows you can do. You can have a multi-state object with additional objects within those states. This is not for responsive design. It has to be a standard non-responsive project, but you can see here, I've got these callouts that are just smart shapes. They point out the different aspects of this particular poster that you see here. These claims here, these items found in good adverts, I don't know if this is true or not. I just made it up. So just so you're aware that this is completely a made up interaction. So what's great is that with uh, building these pop outs directly into your multi state object, you don't have to hide a bunch of objects and show another one and vice versa. It keeps it real simple for you to write the appropriate advanced action. I've also set up in advance my variables because we're gonna to need to keep track of a few things. I have a variable for each one of my six buttons here. So button tracker 01, 02, 03, so on. And then I also have a complete interaction tracking variable as well. It's just called slide 01 visited. Actually, I'd probably give that a better name in the future. I might've called it slide 01 interaction complete or something like that. So those are all in place and you can use those for your advanced action. The first advanced action we're gonna create is we're gonna check to see if the learner has completed this interaction before and then decide whether we're gonna enable and show them the next button right away. So we need to do an on enter advanced action for that. So we're gonna select execute advanced actions. I don't have any scripts written yet, so I'll click on the advanced action icon. And we need to give this uh, advanced action a name. So I'm gonna call this check if interaction completed. In this case, we need it to be a conditional advanced action. So we're gonna select the conditional tab. So we're gonna first of all, look at that variable that we talked about. In this case here, if the variable, and we'll just scroll down a bit, slide 01 visited, in other words, we've completed the interaction once before, is equal to the literal value of one, then we're going to enable our next button slide one, but we're also going to change the state of that very same button to normal. But if it's not equal to one, we're going to go into the else section and disable that button. Next button, slide 01. And we're gonna change the state to that disabled state that I created for this button as well. So the next button, slide one, and we'll choose 
disabled. So that's it. That's a, it's not that complicated. We'll save this as an action. And I'll show you how we change that variable so this is either true or not true. So let's click OK and we'll click Close. The next thing we need to do is we're going to start with our first button here called Health Claim. So I'm going to select that and we're going to go to the Actions tab and we're going to change this to Execute Advanced Actions. It's going to select our Check If Interaction Complete script that we just wrote, but we're actually going to create a new Advanced Action. So I'm going to click on the Advanced Actions icon and we'll create a new advanced action by clicking on the plus icon and we'll call this button 01 underscore slide one because we may have more than one interaction that uses a click to reveal on other portions of this project so the first part of this advanced action is very simple we're going to run just a couple of actions to change the state of that pop-up object we talked about before and we're also going to assign our tracking variable for this button a value of one so very simple we'll go change the state of our pop-up object remember that's the object down here with all the additional objects added to the multiple states and since we're working with health claims we're going to change that to the health claims state and we're going to assign button tracker 01 with a value of one so we can check has someone pressed the health claims button so type in one and hit enter now this is an advanced action that's going to require multiple decision tabs so the first thing i'm going to do before switching to tab number two is i'm going to give tab number one a name and I'm just going to call this button items, simple enough. And we'll click on tab number two. And we're going to type in check if interaction complete. Now this is going to be a conditional advanced action as well, or a conditional decision point. And we're going to check the value of all the variables associated with all six of our buttons. So let's create the first one here, variable button tracker 01 if it's equal to the literal value 1 and in this case because we've just clicked it it is and rather than typing all that out again actually there's a really neat feature in advanced actions that allows you to copy lines of script and paste it in and you can do this multiple times the only problem here is that I can only have four if statements uh, so if you need additional lines for your script, you can actually use the insert icon. And I'll just add a couple of extra lines here. And we can select those and paste that in. Now, of course, I'm just checking for the same variable. Now all I need to do is just change this to 2, 3, 4. And we'll scroll down and get 5 and 6 here. There we go. So we're checking if all of the buttons have been pressed in other words all the tracking variables have a value of one what do we want to do well we're going to enable again that disable enable command we're going to enable the next button for slide 01 we're also going to change the state of that button to normal so it returns to a nice bright white and is available to click and last thing we're going to do is we're going to assign that special variable that we created to determine whether the whole interaction has been completed or not so i'm going to use the assign command and we'll scroll down to slide 01 visited and we'll assign a value of one so before I move on and create uh, the same advanced action for button 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, I'm going to save this as an action, click OK, but I'm not going to click close at this point because I'm going to show you a shortcut for creating those additional advanced actions for button 2, button 3, and so on. Up here in the upper right hand corner, is a button that allows you to duplicate your action 
and I'm going to press that right now. So it makes an exact copy of all the decision tabs and everything. Now all I need to do is just change this by changing the title to something a little more meaningful here. In this case, we're creating the advanced action for button two, and we'll change that back to slide zero one. And instead of changing the state of our pop-up object to health claims, we're creating it for the logo now. So we'll change that to product service logo. And we also want to make sure that we're keeping track of the variable associated with that button. So we'll change this to button tracker 02. And that's it. So now I've created another advanced action and all of this remains the same because we're still checking to see if the interaction has been completed. Nothing changes on the second tab. The only thing you need to change are those two items from the first tab. So we'll update this action, click OK, and I'm going to repeat this until I have all six of my advanced actions written. Okay, so I've created the remaining advanced actions. You can check them here to make sure that you've got all the ones that you need. One, two, three, four, five, and of course six. So I can close this window now. And let's just make sure that I've got the remaining buttons pointed to the right advanced actions here. So I'm just gonna select all of them and execute advanced actions and we'll choose number two and i'll just individually select number three and change that to three four five and six so let's test this out and make sure it works as expected so let's preview an html5 let's start this and and see how it works here we've got all six buttons you'll notice that the next button is not only grayed out, but if I try to click on it, it's disabled, nothing happens. So let's start the interaction. Let's start with health claims. There it is. So again, remember my multi-state objects over here, but it contains additional objects for each of those multi-states. Let's click the logo, specifications, taglines, endorsements, and how to contact. And you'll see when I click that last one, my next button became available because I've done all the steps that are required of me and I can now proceed with the rest of my course. Now, if I move forward to the next slide and then return to the previous slide, it knows that I've completed this interaction already and it makes the next button enabled and available for me right away. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.